Hi, this is Jack Lifton, and this is Critical Metals Corner, and today's topic is going to be BAM. That's what I designate as battery and motor materials. I think that the people who are talking about battery materials full time are miners, uh, and I understand that. But the automotive industry is concerned with two, uh, two things about the electrification of cars. One, batteries, of course. Two, electric motors. They, they, bef any, before the electric car transformation even began, the, the idea was, it was and is to reduce the weight of the vehicle so that the uh, energy of the motor, the engine, is not, is not wasted carrying dead weight. Uh, this has been a mantra as long as I can remember in the automotive industry. Therefore, they were glad to go to rare earth permanent magnet motors for accessories. Uh, they, they really reduced weight. The, 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 before, their, before that time, the only possible power for a, an accessory was, a, was a, a ferrite magnet motor, and these were very heavy. They really were uh, for, for any serious application. So. So rare earth permanent magnets uh, motors just took over immediately in, in, in the 1980s, as I recall. In any case, today there's an additional uh, weight issue and performance issue. And that is that rare earth permanent magnet traction motors that actually drive the car are more efficient than any known AC technology. But I admit that efficiency is only in some cases 5%. But the, the fact is that the, the type of electric motor that is not a rare permanent magnet motor being used in a large application is complicated and complex. And, and that, that leads me to a point I'd like to make. One, don't worry about uh, the demand for battery and motor materials for lithium, cobalt, nickel, rare earths is there that demand is growing uh, it's my opinion that it's already in deficit and and it's going to remain in deficit for some time because there there simply are not enough of those materials uh mined to meet the to meet the even the lowest current projected demand in let's say 2025 for for battery powered electric vehicles using lithium ion batteries but keep in mind, we're talking about both battery materials and motor materials. And, and this is uh, where it's very important for you to understand that the automotive industry, it has been and is a manufacturing engineering problem because engineers have to figure out how to integrate 6,000 parts into a car and that how to make one every minute or so now you know it takes more than a minute to make a car but they do come off the assembly line at at, at rates like that 60 units per hour even even if it's taken 10 hours to to produce the individual unit so in automotive engineering is a thing it, it's not just it's not just a, a uh, a title that somebody gives uh, general motors institute the the original a school that General Motors founded in Flint, Michigan to train automotive engineers on the job as well as in class. And then I believe uh, they gave a degree in automotive engineering. I believe Purdue was next. Now, now you can get such degrees in most engineering schools in the world. But the point is automotive always addressed the problems of making a car as a manufacturing engineering problem. The sales department uh, always uh, con is concerned with the with the price of the car and the size of the market, the demand. So today, the automotive industry is, is in a bit of confusion because they really don't understand and don't want to understand battery technology, except in terms of engineering it into the system and figuring out how to set, how to uh, price uh, this so that the the market they understand can afford to buy them the problem is now 
that government has intervened in the market so that the decree from on high in, in many governments, the U.S. included, is that thou shalt make so many electric cars per, as a percentage of your total production by such and such a year. And, and that so let it be written, so let it be done. This works in China, and, and China's way ahead of us on this. They've, they've decided that they will be 25% BEV by 2025 and 50% by 2030. And they've been, as I've written before, they've been uh, working on this project for years and they've acquired all the raw materials they need, all the processing they need, and quite frankly, all the car makers they need. I want, I want to, to now make a particular point. There's a call that's going to happen among the world's automotive companies. Now, call means in, in agriculture that you reduce the size of your herd of uh, food animals, for example, because you cannot afford to feed them all. Uh, you have too many. Right now, if we're going to go only with electric cars, we have too many manufacturers. And this, this is not new. The, the last time uh, transportation changed power sources was when muscle power, i.e. horses, gave way to uh, chemical power, i.e. internal combustion engines. That, that was a great call, but <laughs> who went out of business? Uh, carriage makers, uh, people who raised horses, the, the, those things didn't, didn't work out. But it's hard, hard to believe today but New York in 1910 had 150,000 horses used for transportation. You can imagine the mess that was left over. That was one of that was one of the problems that the the internal combustion engine and and originally also electric and steam drive were intended to uh, solve. And I, I guess they did. But the the point is that this transformation was very dramatic. Think about it. Horses had been motive power for human beings for, at that time, about 5,000 years. And in just a couple of decades, they were gone. And, and we had the internal combustion engine for, another, for, for the next century. Now we're looking to, not to get rid of cars, as we got rid of horses, but to, to get rid of internal combustion engines and change them over to battery electric vehicles. This is, is uh, again, an engineering problem. I love it when people say, well, you know, there are less moving parts. Yes, there, there are only 4,000 or so parts in an electric car as opposed to 6,000 in, in a internal combustion engine powered car. And yes, the difference in parts are, are internal uh, parts of an internal combustion engine, but you still have to engineer, integrate 4,000 parts, yes, uh, one of them is a very complex lithium ion battery, which is not, not just a bucket filled with lithium. It, it's, it's an electronic device. It has many computer chips in it, and it weighs half a ton, for, for example, in a Tesla. That, putting that into the, the powertrain in place of the internal combustion engine is an engineering problem. No one in the automotive industry was prepared for the resource problem. That's the real problem. Because mining is, is, is not to produce cars or magnets or anything like that. Mining is to produce mineral concentrates that are transformed into uh, metallic or chemical forms of elements that are then processed into end forms that are used by manufacturers. The manufacturers traditionally don't pay any attention to this, to those things at all. And they assume that their top suppliers will supply them with the parts they specify and need. These suppliers in turn keep going down the, their supply chain until, until ultimately it gets to mining. Normally, um, and I did this for a long time, maybe I hate to say this, <laughs> I was trying to sell things to automotive for the best part of half a century. And I can tell you that they knew nothing 
whatsoever about the origin of, of their supplies. They, if you'd show them an, an iron mine and say, this is where steel comes from, they, you know, it's, that's nice. You know, can I, is, can I get a frame copy? They don't care. They didn't care. And now they have to care and the system is in chaos. They are now just saying, well, we're going to produce, we, uh, Cadillac will be all electric by 2025. Uh, I think Volkswagen made the same statement about 2030 without taking one second to think about where are the resources for the components to come from. You see, because that's not, that's not they don't buy those resources, they buy the components. So I see a glimmer of understanding happening. Uh, Volkswagen, uh, I believe, and I think BMW have actually engaged with uh, Glencore Mining and, and uh, some others to, to uh, pre-purchase cobalt concentrates, I guess, because that, that just means they're going, to, they're going to agree to buy those things and then consign them to wherever in their supply chain they're required so that ultimately they take delivery on a, lithium, a large lithium ion battery. And, and uh, more companies have, have uh, invested in lithium because of this. But again, I think these people are asleep at the automotive industry because as you know, my position is that there simply isn't enough of these raw materials to go around and, and I'm sure I'm right. So that I can tell you that some of these companies that are asleep right now will disappear in the near term, near term being five or 10 years. So I guess that I don't, I don't, I, there is a demand. There's a demand for much more lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese, where it's than we can possibly produce. So it's going to be a seller's market for some time. Uh, the end game, I'll leave it to you younger people to figure out, but I'm telling you that it's going to be a game of haves and have nots. Some nations like China will electrify their transportation fleet. Other nations will try. I don't know if they'll be successful. I really doubt it. Um, but as far as raw materials go, it's, it's absolutely a seller's market. And so good luck. Thank you.